Hey everybody, let's do some vocals today. Everybody asks me about vocals. So, um, we are going to do a, well, I'll show you how I handle vocals. How about that? That'll, uh, um, try to deal with the software over here. Just give me a second. Ha <laughs> ha. It's all new stuff for me. I'm still getting used to uh, this. All right. So. What I have here is a vocal track. Well, it's actually a mix that I'm doing for a group called Psychotica. And Patrick Biggs is a friend of mine and the lead singer. So what they did is they sent me their vocal files. And what I did is I built a whole song out of it, which is what you see over here. All these little parts are bass and drums and synthesizer parts because I'm doing a remix. They're basically, you know, kind of like a rock and roll band as I would do it. I mean, uh, describe it. So, these are rock vocals, right? And these red things down here are his vocals. I've made them red so you can see them and I can find them a lot easier. Let's see, let's get this up here so everybody can see this nice and clearly. Now, if you notice, these vocals, especially in here, are pieces, right? These are all little pieces in here. I'll highlight one of them. It'll turn another color. So these are all little pieces of vocals. And uh, to me, it looks like when they did the vocals, they did a couple of takes. They pasted um, things together. Why are you guys not seeing this? Oh, let's see. New software. Let's do this again. All right, here we are. Sorry about that, folks. Here we are. So this is Logic that I work in. You could do this on any computer, any piece of software that you want. Uh, but it's always basically the same. This is that Logic session that I mentioned a moment ago and you couldn't see. These are all the little pieces with the bass and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and I put synthesizer parts. So what, we've, what I've done in here is I'm blowing up just the vocal parts there in red. All these are little vocal sections like I just said a moment ago, but you couldn't see it. I'll highlight a whole chunk of them right here. So what this is telling me is when they recorded the vocals, they did a whole bunch of little pieces. I'll just take a piece and move it up so you can get an idea. See, these are all little pieces of vocals in here, right? So, from my eye, looking at this, there's no major problems, but something I don't particularly care about is something called normalization. What normalization does is it takes your audio, scans the audio file, and takes the highest peak and brings it up to zero in digital. That's perfect, you know, perfect level. And it brings everything else kind of like elastic. It stretches without you know, modifying the way the um, the way the sound sounds, it brings it up to zero and and makes it louder and stronger. And something else it does. You have digital analog converters. When you're sending a vocal that's really quiet, you're not using the full power of the uh, of the digital analog converter, right? Uh, the sound is going through, but you have all this bandwidth and you're only lose using a little part. When you normalize your vocal, you're suddenly using this whole pipeline. Also, when you're sending stuff through a compressor, through a reverb, and it's not normalized, you're not using the full bandwidth of the effect, right? And that's important because your levels are going to be all over the place. Uh, these things are designed to, uh, you know, to work at certain uh, you know, um, levels and stuff like that. So if you're feeding your compressor with a vocal that's really quiet, it's not going to work as well. Okay, so let's take the very first vocal. Let's play the vocal. This is a rock and roll vocal. You know, for your disco bunnies, you're just going to have to hang in there. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. Now we're going to come to the vocal and up on the I next track. And I temptation up. like a bait that eats a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. 
Rolling all my hope on the 514 ticket. I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on the 514 to destiny. Okay. So what you see here is a vocal broken into many different tracks. Easy or depending on how you want to mix this vocal, if that's just a flat lead and you want to keep that vocal all on one track, well, we've got three tracks over here. That means three times the compression, three times the reverb, three times the EQ, uh, which can put stress on your computer or not. Right, depending on what kind of a system you have. I have a pretty powerful system, but if you're working on a laptop. So one of the things I would do is I go into Logic over here and I choose the Scissors tool. And what this tool does is it lets me snip audio. I'm gonna come move the cursor. This is how you get a great, nice, tight cut. Put it right over here on bar 41. This, the very lowest red, I'm gonna hold down my command key and I'm gonna snip. And if you see, suddenly there's a break here. And I'm gonna just take that and do that. Now, you probably have an idea where I'm going. I'm actually gonna make this a little shorter, but not clip a vocal. So you probably get an idea where I'm going with this. I'm now gonna grab this vocal on the middle track and I'm simply going to drag it down to here and now I'm going to take the vocal on the upper track and I'm going to drag this down to here all right now our vocal is sitting on one track so the track above it I'm going to mute and the track above that I'm going to mute, but this track over here, it's actually sitting in a group. I'm going to leave unmuted. There we go. So there's our vocals all on one track. Now, if you have a keen eye, you're going to notice something over here. Look, these vocals up here are much louder than the vocals over here. What do we do to fix that? Well, we're going to normalize. But instead of going into all these little individual pieces right here, right, I can normalize each piece individually. I think what I'm going to do, because I've done this before, I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to right click on the audio track and choose bounce in place. It's at the top right now because I used it, but it may be down here somewhere. Just find bounce in place. And it's going to tell me, what do I want to name this? So this is going to be main lead bounce. All right. I'm going to bypass my effects plugins. That's kind of important because otherwise, if one track has echo and the other doesn't, you're going to wind up with echo only in one little part of your audio and you don't want that. And I'm going to tell it to normalize, but I'm going to have to go in and normalize again. But I'm going to have it do some of the work for me. I'm going to tell it okay. And if you watch what's happening, you see what's happening? It just went through all of that, and it took the vocal, and it put it down on this track over here. So let's solo this track. And there's our vocal, which is identical to the one above it but now sitting on one track. Now, I'm gonna pull this vocal composite out of the way just for now so we don't have to look at it. All right, let me just drag this down to the bottom where it is. Okay, so let's go back in here. Actually, let me put this on the top. It'll make it a lot easier for you guys not to get confused. Give me a couple of seconds here. I wanna raise this up to the top so it's out of the way for now. Eventually, I will delete this track, but not until I make sure everything is okay. And remember, in Logic and most of these programs, this is called non-destructive editing. So we're just, we're editing references to audio that are sitting on a disk, but not the actual audio file itself. But when you normalize, that is destructive. 
So when you normalize something, you are changing the master file. When I composited everything like this, it's taking all those pieces of the audio file and putting it on one track. All right, let's, let's make this a little taller so you guys can see it. All right, here's our audio. Now, I don't know, you not, may not be able to see if you're on a, uh, uh, on a, uh, uh, what do you call it, on a, uh, a, a cell phone or a tablet, but I'm going to move the cursor right over to this section over here, right to the right side of the cursor. There's a huge peak that comes all the way up to here. This song has a huge peak, I mean, sound has a huge peak going all the way down to there. If I normalize this track, we, we can't normalize because Logic says that this is the highest point in this audio track, and it's right. So we're going to get around that. I'm going to double click. And in Logic, you, your program will have an audio editor. And, whoops, sorry about that. We didn't want to do that. Let's undo whatever we just did accidentally. We, um, here's our audio file. Composited down into one thing. Here we go. So let's normalize sections of the audio very carefully. I'm going to go to File. This is the actual audio file. And I'm going to take groups of audio. So again, here's that piece right in here that's really high. I want to avoid that. So I'm going to go before it, right? There's our audio. And we're going to go to Functions, Normalize. Did you see how big that waveform got? That's great. That's going to give us better volume, better dynamics in what we're doing. OK. That's going to push that compressor and that EQ a little bit better. So here we go over here. Let's blow this up a little bit. Just this one section. Here's that piece of audio that's really loud. I'm very carefully going to go to the right side of that peak and take it to here. And I'm going to normalize. OK. Now if you look at the piece before it, it's slightly lower. Uh, you can play games and go in here and do stuff like this. Like right here, I see there's a peak. So I'm going to go right before the peak. I mean, you, you really have to know what you're doing to do this. If not, just normalize like I showed you. But I'm going to go in here and tweak this. I'm going to grab after this peak and go over here. And I'm going to normalize. This is how to get really great sounding even vocals. This helps your compressor and everything work better. All right. So let me zoom out for a second, and I want to show you the difference between the before and the after. Look to the look. Look at these. This bit of audio compared to the audio to the left side of it. What a difference in volume, and not only in volume, but you're also bringing up the resolution of harmonics and the air between the vocals, right? So, like I explained in another video, sometimes you sing like this and sometimes you sing like this. How do you get all of that dynamic range evened out? We're going to use a compressor and I'll show you that, but how do you get that dynamic range so somebody could understand vocals? Well, start by no I start by normalizing. Here you, because then you don't have to use as much of a compressor. If I, I'll teach you what a compressor is, but if you left the vocal the way it is, you'd have to use a lot of compressor and you get this pumping sound, you know, in a lot of rave music when the music's going like this. They're using a compressor as an effect. But you don't really want that on a vocal by normalizing it instead of um, using a compressor over, you know, 10 or 20 dB, it's uh, decibels. You're only doing it over two or three decibels. So that voice doesn't pump. It sounds more even. So I grab this next bit of audio. We're going to normalize. And I'm going to continue this on for the rest of the track. Let's go in here. I see there's a bit of a peak here. So I'm going to grab this before the peak. I'm going to normalize. And I'm going to grab the peak and normalize. And then I'm going to grab after the peak, right in there, and I'm going to normalize. You may have to blow your waveforms up. And here we go, all the way through here. This looks good to the end. And let's go ahead and normalize. All right, now, 
if we uh, look at the whole entire file, let me close this editing window, look at the difference, right? Now our vocals are a little more even in volume, and that's going to give better control when we're using a compressor or something that we need to smooth the vocal out or do an echo or get understanding of words. So... There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. I hope you're listening with headphones or earbuds. If you notice at this point, it's kind of a little more in your face. If you notice, suddenly the vocal was here, it's a little bit more right here. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a 5 4. Now that vocal sounds pretty even, but when you put it against a whole track of music, Trust me, it's not going to get even. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some processing to the vocal. Right away, a little EQ. Well, before I do the EQ, I like to put a compressor first. Okay, here we go with compressors. What is a compressor? Well, a compressor is something that I showed you in another video. Automatically turns the volume up and down really, really fast. Faster than you can do it. If you were on a fader, if you, if you guys could see in the um, lower left-hand corner here, if I was mixing, look at the lower left-hand corner, I, the fader's moving up and down. I couldn't do that in real time across 30 tracks. It's physically impossible. Well, there's a device that does that for you and smooths and evens out your vocal. All right, so the first thing we're gonna put in audio effects is a compressor. And it says mono because this is a mono track and we're going to load up a compressor. Now, there are many different types of compressors. A lot of times companies model or emulate old school compressors, right? In the early days they were made with tubes because we didn't have transistors. Later on they were made with tubes. And then there's uh, uh, VCA compressors, digital compressors, FET compressors. If you go online and you Google different types of compressors, you could read up what they are. They all have different sounds. Some of them are a little warmer, some of them are a little harder, some act a little faster. So you probably don't want to put a warm, smooth, round, fuzzy compressor on a kick drum, right? Because you want a hard one that punches you in the face. And inversely, you wouldn't want a hard compressor on a vocal, you kind of want a smoother one. If you're in Logic, just stick with this. It, it comes up as a default as a classic VCA compressor. All right, here's our compressor. The compressor has an input, which is the left over here, and an output in the right. Now, it's real important that we watch our levels to make sure that our input is not overloading our output. Let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, it, Take a look at that. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that eats a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. That compressor is actually working. Let's set the threshold up a little bit. Now, a lot of companies have presets. So we're going to go to voice and these are just starting points. You could actually use this as a finishing point, but let's see, it's not a dance vocal, it's not a classical vocal, not really live. Let's try a studio vocal because he would be in a studio singing. Let's give that a try. Notice a change from a classic VCA to a studio VCA. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. Now, if you notice on the right hand, right hand side, the output's a little too loud. All right, so we can pull our output down just a tiny bit. 
There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope that it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that eats a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling on my hope. All right, there we go. So that's now um, given us pretty even volume. There's this thing called auto gain over here. Sometimes you can use it. This will take 12 decibels of audio out. Let's show you what that sounds like. There's a sign. That's a little too hot. Now there's two ways you can deal with that. We're okay because I normalized the vocal. Had you not normalized the vocal, you'd have to go to 12 dB or 0 dB. There's a sign. Obviously that's too much. I normalize, so I don't need auto gain, okay? Distortion is an effect later on that you can use. A limiter, it puts a peak on it and makes sure that it never goes above zero and distorts. Well, not, well. There's a sign. You notice the little in limiter in here, this light? Station, so don't you walk on the track. You notice that little light that's going on and off? It's, it's making sure that you don't go into the red and distort your audio. This is set for 1 dB, which is kind of a great place to be it won't go to zero it'll go to minus one and never go to zero because that limiter is kicking in in the old train station so don't you walk on the track i hope that it'll pass me by we got a great starting place let's go ahead and keep these settings and if you like it by the way you can go into the compressor here and you could do a save as and i can call this um psychotica voice vocal okay so if i come back or i really love this session uh, this thing or i do another song and you know they're here um i'm using his vocal all i gotta do is go in here see there's one for man horns because i did some horn stuff in a previous session psychotic vocal i could pop this up and bang it's right there ready to go all right let's start with that as a starting place now I don't have this song mixed enough. Let me get in here for a second. You're going to have to now, well, there's a few other things we could do before we go any further. So there's your compressor. I noticed in the beginning there was a little blurb of studio sound. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. So I'm going to see if I could loop this right in this part. It's not as critical because it's not very loud, but let's see if I can loop this so you guys can hear this. Uh, how do I loop? How do I loop? Loop, loop, loop. Where's the loop? Here's the loop. Okay. Let me make it, let me make it just a little piece in here. You got the end of the vocal, this little piece right here. I'm looping it over and over again. There's a probably punched in and out. Maybe somebody moved while it was recording. You, we we could we we can leave that because it's going to get drowned out. But if you wanted to get rid of it, you could just simply go to functions. Now you can either silence that. I would be a little safe over here. I'm holding down the shift key, and I'm just perfectly getting it away from the vocal. And I could do silence. And now. This. Bye. All right. Let's Bye. Bye. Give me a second. I gotta grab a big piece of water. There we go. Now, when his vocal ends, you're not gonna hear that anymore. Bye. And I'm bye. Okay. You want to? You don't want to take out breathing and stuff like that because that's human. But we got a little. Uh, 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 a piece of bad audio out there. Okay, so next, what do we do? Well, I have a few tools that I like to use. All right, I hope you guys are listening with headphones. One of them is EQ. Logic comes with its own EQ, and I'll show you some EQ here. This is a band of frequencies. The left is the bass, the middles 
uh, the mid range and the upper, the top is the, you know, the, the, the higher frequencies. Let's do a little bit of vocal and let's see what the difference is. There's a sign in the old train station. So don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sticking boat, but. Well, right there, the vocal gets really harsh. So let me play this piece without some EQ and then with. That kind of hurts my ears. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. That's a little biting. Now, depending on the kind of track you're doing, if, if this was hardcore guitars and a lot of distortion and noise, that would be great to cut through the sound. But I'm doing more of a dance, electronic kind of mix, so my sounds are a lot smoother. So in this particular part where this vocal gets harsh, we need to find what's the worst frequencies and take it out there's two ways you could take the freak you, you, you could you could run the vocal in a loop which i'm going to do and we can try to subtract it to find the frequency i'm on a sinking boat but i'm still alive rolling all my hope on a fear i'm on a sinking boat but i'm still alive I would, in all my hope. I'd say somewhere around there. The other way to do it is you could accentuate it to make it really obvious. And once you find that frequency, and you can pull it out. Here we go. We're going to do the opposite. Watch your ears, folks. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling on my hope. On a fear. Well, right in there, that's really hurting. So that frequency is 2,000 cycles. I'm going to take that frequency, and I'm going to... Pull it out. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope. Now, in a previous thing, I talked about sibilance. Those S's and T's are so critically important for people to understand what the lead singer is saying. All right, so let's put some S and T's back in. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope. Okay, now this is a male vocal, obviously. I want to push up a little bit of the, the throat, the male, the macho part of the vocal. And let's find that. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on the fear. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. And I just took out very low frequencies, just in case that there's some rumble and stuff like that. So for this particular singer, let's copy this. Let's go ahead and flatten the vocal again, and we'll do a compare. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. And let's put it back to where it was. Paste. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. That's a little bit easier to listen to than the other way around. So we have a basic of EQ, we have a basic of compression. All right, now I'm gonna, I have to get in here. Where's our lead vocal here? Let me lead bounce, where are we? Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna start adding music back into this so we can now make our vocals a little bit more even with everything else that's going on. All right, I have no idea. Let me grab all this other audio. You can't see it, but I'm grabbing it on another screen and I'm gonna bring the audio down. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a fear. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Now, what you're hearing is music is not mixed, okay? So this is an unmixed track. It's going to sound a little off. It's not going to be pumping. It's not going to be happening, you know, rock out with your cock out kind of thing. It's not happening. But that's okay because I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that when we mix it. But I'm just trying to get a vocal level right now. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. Let's see if I can put some of the drums up. Let's get this in here. No, go away. 
All right, uh, where's our drums? Uh, drums, please. I think this is our drums here. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope that it'll pass me by. And I will need temptation like a baked Elizabeth fish. And I wish it were here. That's not the right bass track because it's out of time, but here we go. Let's put some hi hats in here. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope that it'll pass me by. And I will need temptation like a baked Elizabeth fish. And I wish it were here. Our drums are out of sync, and I'm not sure why. I just updated to a new version of Logic and it's driving me crazy with all the synchronization stuff. Let's see if we can get these to sync a little bit better. Let's put that in. Let's put this in here. I'll explain this stuff later, promise. Jesus Christ. There's a sign in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope that it'll pass me by. And I will need temptation like it baked Elizabeth Fair. If you noticed, the drums were out of sync and I suddenly put them back in sync. I will teach you all this stuff, but we're working on vocals right now. All right, so we got that lead vocal down on the bottom. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope that it'll pass me by. And I will need temptation like a baked Elizabeth fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sick and boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a 514 ticket. I'm still alive. This was a rock and roll track with no drum, uh, not, there were drums in it, but it sounded nothing like this. I'm just trying to give it this electronica pumping kind of thing to it. So we've got our vocals, doesn't sound bad, but I've done this before. I want a little more security on this vocal. So these are external plugins that do not come with Logic. I bought along the way. So I'm gonna go to Waves and they have something called the Vocal Rider, R-I-D-E-R. And you'll see this, 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 basically this um, fader will come up and you're going to watch this thing work. So let's, it's, the vocals coming into this. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope that it'll pass me by. And I will need temptation like a baked Elizabeth fish. And I wish you were here. You see that you see that moving up and down as where uh, as it's doing the vocals what I told you before it's it's like a type of compressor it's moving stuff up and down um, faster than you can let's go back in here again in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track I hope it'll pass me by and I will need temptation I'm going to make the lower volume a little higher. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. If you look over here on the very left side, this is the fader. I'm going to zero this out. This is the fader over here for this track on the extreme left lower hand corner. There's no red right now. And the vocal's pretty in your face. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. Yeah, we got a little red there. I'm gonna pull it down just a little more. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I will need temptation like a baked Elizabeth fish. And I wish you were here. Now, a lot of music just came in blaring horns. They're not set at the levels that I want, but all of a sudden, those little quiet vocals are now loud enough to compete 
with all this production that suddenly came in at this point. Okay, the vocal's very dry, and I, and I am aware, um, let me fix that right now, that on the right lower hand corner that the master is uh, peeking out. I got it, I'm gonna go grab this audio and bring it down just a little bit. And I should stop that. I, in old train stations, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I will meet temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish it were here. I'm on a sick and boat, but I'm still alive. See that fader moving? We're in good shape. Okay, we're not peaking red. Now, this vocal is a little dry and it's a little boring. So, let's add some sweetness to it. Now, I took out that harsh frequency. I'm thinking from experience in the back of my head, we may need a little bit of that harsh frequency back. I'm gonna do that right now while we're here. I'm in old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I will meet temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish it were here. That sounds a little better. Okay, what do we do to sweeten this up and make it sound better, better, better? Well, let's see. We have a lot of toys we could play with. I think a little bit of delay for starters. I love it. I use something called Relayer by UVI. It's a more than basic delay, but if not, you can go into Logic or your program and, and you should have Delay Designer, Echo, Simple Delay, which are mono, Stereo Delay, and Tape Delay. These are all different kind of delays. If you go and you experiment, put something in a loop and experiment with it, you'll get some ideas. I like Relayer. Nothing's better than anything else. It all does the same thing. I like this interface. I like the way it talks to me. Oh, that's a little too much. Let's try different times. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I will meet temptation like a bank that leads a big fish. That's obviously a nice delay time, but it's a bad level. There's several things I could do in this particular delay thing. First of all, I could choose how much echo is on there. I mean, a re a delay is on there. I'm going to bring up this knob here on the right hand side. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. I'm going to go on the left side and play with some delay. Uh, Settings. This is 16th. I'm going to bring the volume up a little. 16th notes, and I'm going to take this all the way down to whole notes. I'm in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I will meet temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sick and boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a fire. I'm still alive, rolling on my hope on the 514 to destiny. All right, so there's many different choices of, re of delay. What's a good delay? What sounds good to your ears? I like this long delay in the choruses, but in the verses, it's too much. I'll show you. There's a way you can actually um, get different delays on different parts of a vocal. But let's just find something that's really nice. I'm somewhere around the eighth note or eighth note something or other in here. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I will meet temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sick and boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a 514 ticket. I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on the 514 to destiny. 
those drums are out of sync up in there. God, this drives me crazy. This is a new version of Logic. I don't understand what they changed. It's making me nuts. Let's grab all these drum parts. These all should be... Synchronizing, please. I don't know why. I have to go back in and play with this. It's driving me nuts. I'm in all train stations. So don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. Now, I kind of like the, 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 the delay. Play with it a little more. But this has a filter on it. So if you look at the lower right-hand side, let me get back to the vocals. I don't want all this to confuse you. So, on the lower right hand side, there's something called master filter down here. I turn it on, and now we could roll off the low frequencies so that echo is no longer hello, hello, it's now hello, hello. It takes the lower frequencies out, not letting that, that, that delay compete with what he's saying. I'll roll off the lower end, and let, I'm going to turn the, the effect up really loud so you can hear the difference. <laughs> Train stations, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need a temptation like a bag that eats a big fish. And if you were here, I'm on. That's better, but obviously it's too in your face. So we're going to go to this wet and dry over here. The dry is going to be all the way up because we're, we want the original vocal to pass through this. Now the wet is the effect. Let's bring the... We have it somewhere where I like it. Let's bring it up again. I'm in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that leads a big fish. And I wish you were here. Ha! So the great thing about where it is right now is it's not interfering with the vocal. It's not interfering with the words. But when he stops singing, you hear a little slap of a, of a wish we here 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 um, so it's a nice little sweet spot we found I'm using eighth note dotted notes the feedback isn't too high the feedback is that loop 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 loop, loop. how many times it repeats before it dies down um, and I have the filter on here I'm taking you won't be able to see this probably I'm taking off 500 cycles uh, and then uh, everything below 500, uh, 500 cycles and everything above 2,000 cycles. So it's this nice little delay. I'm in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation. All right, that's starting to also sound a lot better. Now, a good vocal needs some reverb. I'm a big stickler about not putting reverbs on individual tracks. I explained this in an earlier um, uh, uh, video that I did. If you take, imagine yourself sitting in a theater, in a void, wherever you want, and you're listening to music. That space has a sound. It's a hall, it's a box, it's an amphitheater, it's outer space. Whatever that space is, you're going to define that. This is a rock song, so it can't be like an ambient, lush, echoey, you know, dreamy thing. It has to be tight enough to give a punch, but have enough depth so there's definition, right? You can't put drums all the way in the back of, you know, an airplane hangar. They're going to echo all over the place, right? If you have mixes and they're getting messy, if you have reverbs on every channel, One's a, one's a room, one's a, one's a hall, one's a chamber, one's a, an auditorium. You're confusing somebody's ears. There's all this shit going on, all this slapback echo. So I'll show you later how to make buses, but what I do is I, let's pull the mixer over here. This looks very confusing. I'll teach you about mixers. This is really, really simple. I'll give you a quick tutorial on a mixer. I'm gonna highlight one track. If you can understand what that one track is, it's just the same thing over and over again. It's that simple. You don't have to worry about all of this. All you have to do is learn what one of these things do. And these are just multiplications of this one track, right? 
So, let's go to the vocal track all the way over here. I've made something called a bus. And what a bus is, is it's sending this particular piece of audio behind the scenes, behind all these tracks, down to, uh, let's get over here, where is it? Down to here, which is, Logic makes this automatically. This is bus one. And if you look over here, it automatically made it as bus one. All right, okay. So I'm sending reverb. I'm sending everything, any of these tracks that I, that I send bus one, this track over here, bus one. If I go to the track next to it and I, I, I send this to bus one, okay. This is all sending that audio discreetly to this fader. Okay. The buses send audio in the background to another channel strip or fader. What I've inserted on that fader is, let's wake you up, hello. Oh, here it is, it's over on this monitor. I put a reverb on this fader. Anything that goes to bus one, and this fade, this strip I, it is bus one, is going to be processed through this reverb. I also have bus two. Bus two is going to, it looks like the same reverb, but, the, but it's, it's a copy of bus one, bus two. To your eye, it looks the same, but I've actually used different presets in here, okay? So I'll show you the difference between, uh, one's a short reverb and one's a long reverb. When you're doing vocals, it's nice to make them lush, right? You wanna, you want, you wanna make your 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 lead singer, your star, sound nice. So, choosing the first channel, it's hard for you guys to see on phones, but if you have your earphones in, you're gonna hear this. So let's run some vocal, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna give it a let's, let's solo it. Actually, it's a better way to hear it. Um, so, you're gonna hear the reverb. The first one's gonna be a short reverb, and then I'll stop and then I'll do it again with a long reverb. All right, because I'm on the wrong, wrong track. That's why even, even I get lost every once in a while. I move the vocal all the way down here. That's the old vocal. We want the new vocal. Uh, okay, uh, let's, 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 let's go in here and highlight it. Come on, where is the vocal? The vocal is here. Main vocal bounce. That should be highlighted now over here. Main bounce right here. Okay. So let's give it short reverb and then long, and you can hear the difference. Let's solo it. In the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that leads a bait. That's the short. Let's try it with the longer reverb. So don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. So with those two send those two buses, we can send. Sometimes they're called send, sometimes they're called buses. We're sending the vocal into that reverb. So let's turn on our track and listen to some of the, you know, do we need a short reverb or long reverb or combination of both? I, in the old train station, so don't you walk on the track. I hope it'll pass me by. And I need temptation like a bait that eats a big fish. I know if you were here. I kind of like that because it's not in your face and it's not washed all the way back there. It's away from you a little bit in, in a space, but not being drowned out, okay? So, very basically, we can go into deeper vocals. That's how to deal with vocals, right? Now, of course, there's things you could do, like I talked about, I would love to have a, a different kind of echo or an effect on a chorus. 
I'll show you that really, really quick, but we should really do that as a deeper study. Here's our vocal. It's highlight, high lit over up on the top. Again, guys, you can't really see much. There's a plus, and then there's a plus with a box behind it. If you choose the box behind it, it's going to take the vocal track. Let me put this. Uh, it's going to take this vocal track and make an exact copy with all the settings that you made with reverb and compressor. And it's going to make a second copy of the track. And I'm going to do that right now. And you're going to see a track pop up underneath this one. I'm going to hit plus. And there we go. It made a second track and highlighted it. So now I'm going to take this vocal. And I'm going to hold down the option key till I see a little plus sign. And I'm going to drag this down here. Now we have two exact tracks of our vocal. Well, why? Well, because I want to put a kind. Of, I, I I want to make the those the, the bridges and the choruses stand out a little bit. So let's spot. I'm going to mute this track so it doesn't get real loud. Let me find where it goes from the soft vocal to the loud vocal. And I need temptation like a bait that eats a big fish. And I wish you were here. Okay. Well, and I wish you were here. It comes right in over here. Uh, Okay, so we're going to uh, cut that out right now. All right. I'm going to unmute this. And on that, I wish you were here. I'm going to give it a really big banging vocal. I'm going to open up the, the, the reverb. I'm going to bring the volume up and give it a nice effect. Uh, all right, now watch what happens. We're going to have volume problems, but we'll deal with that later. Watch what happens when it gets to that section when this when this second vocal comes in with an effect on it. And I need temptation like a bait that eats a big fish. I know if you were here. I'm on a second boat, but I'm still alive. Roll it. So all that reverb came in. Many ways you could deal with it is you can go to the track above it. You can just cut out the vocal from there. Remember, this is like a word processor. That vocal is still there. If you made a mistake, you can always go in here and drag this back because it's what we call non-destructive. It's still sitting on the disc, but it's just telling Logic not to play it at this point. So here we go. So let's balance this craziness out. And I need temptation like a bait that eats a big fish. And I wish you were here. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a 514 ticket. I'm still alive. Rolling all my hope on a 514. And we're going to do the word destiny out in reverb over here. Let's just drag this down to this track because it's all set. Rolling on my hope on the 514 to destiny. I understand that the drums are out of time. I've got to go back and work on that. But you get an idea of what you could start doing with special effects by making copies, right? Like if you wanted this center section over here. I want that to be bigger. The vocal is here. I want that to be a wide vocal. Check this out. All right, I'm going to clip this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to make, I'm going to move this echo above so it doesn't get confusing. All right, that's the piece of echo that we did. Let's get rid of this for now. Okay, now here's our lead vocal again. I want I want the center section. Rolling on my hope on a 514 ticket. Rolling on my hope a 514 ticket. So I'm gonna cut before, I'm gonna cut after. I'm gonna ask Logic to make two copies. One, two of the exact same track. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hold down the option key click on that. I'm going to put one copy here. 
and I'm going to take the other copy and bring it down here. Okay, on this track here, I'm going to, if you can see on the left hand side, I'm going to pan it left. On this track, I'm going to pan it right. And I want to go in and change the start points of this so it sounds like a chorus. When people sing, they never sing on time the second time. How do you emulate more than one person or double track? You take the, the, the audio here. I'm just going to shift it back a couple of milliseconds there and check this out. It's going to go from mono vocal to a wider vocal and less... I'm going to take out a little bit of the delay in the volume of the left. I've panned these tracks left and right, and I'm just taking out a little bit of the delay so it isn't as confusing. All right. Now let's listen to the result. You'll get an idea. So do you hear where the vocal is going left and right over there? I could do this multiple, multiple, multiple tracks until it's, you know, in, 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 until it's, you know, a hundred person uh, uh, background thing. I'm, I'm going to actually um, try something to, to, to juice this up. I'm going to go to the delay and instead of bringing it down, I'm going to set it to 16th notes as a slap echo and bring the effect up a little higher and it's going to confuse your ear to thinking that there's more people singing. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Delay. Let's bring it up to 16th notes. I'm trying to fool your ear. And let's bring this up a little bit. And I want to change the start, slide this back a little bit more. All right, let's listen to the vocal go from mono to a chorus stereo. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. On my hope. That's that's too far. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling on my hope on 514 to get. Let's give it a different space. That's in. I'm going to open this up to a bigger reverb. I'm trying to create separation and make it sound like he double and triple track his voice. Let's bring the left and right in a little bit. It's too far wide. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling on my boat on 514. I'm still alive. I got too much long reverb on there. I'm on a sinking boat, but I'm still alive. Rolling on my boat on 5:14. So you get an idea where you could take vocals. Now I can do multiple, 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 multiple tracks of this and build it up to that's two people singing. I can make it ten people singing, and all of a sudden it sounds like there's a crowd in there singing. All right, um, I need to go ahead and mix this track and. Um, get this happening because I promised them I was going to do it, but I have been hanging out with you guys for the last couple of days and I haven't done this mix. It's a friend of mine and I've been helping him out. Anyway, there we go. This is a, just a very basics on vocals, how to normalize, how to get stuff up and running, how to add some basic effects and some EQs. There's all other parts of this, like how to get your drums punchy, how to make that bass sound good, how to separate things in the mix, but this is basically simple fundamentals of vocals. Um, I'm going to try to go live every Sunday at noon. All right, I have to pick somebody up at the airport this Sunday and I'm going to race back with five minutes to get my computer on and get it up and running and, and see you guys. I will answer questions on Sundays whenever I'm on possible and I'm going to keep doing some more stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for, um, for listening in and um, comments are great. Suggestions all that kind of stuff and tune in on Sunday and I can answer questions.